Okay, this is uh, Calc AB exam review quiz number two. Uh, and it looks like we're given a graph and we're gonna have to do some stuff. So, so at G equal uh, integral two to X F of T dt, where the graph of F is shown above. Um, state any intervals on which G is both increasing and concave down, then we have to also justify that. So step one is gonna be, uh, we have to find G prime. So G prime is second fundamental theorem d prime of x is f of x. I usually say times one, but I'm not gonna do that here. Uh, so you take the upper bound, plug it in, then multiply by the derivative of the upper bound, but that's just one. So this is uh, our derivative and then increasing concave down means that we want g prime to be uh, positive, but decreasing. So I'm gonna, I guess, kind of highlight those. So positive decreasing is here to here, and then uh, here to here. So let's write up our reason. I'm gonna kind of like write it above and then move it down, I think. I feel like that's the most convenient thing for me to do. So I will say that uh, g of x is increasing concave down on negative uh, six. I guess I'll include that uh, to negative five. Actually, I don't wanna include negative five because we're not really uh, increasing there. It's not important, like you can include them or not include them. That's that's not gonna cost you. Um, and zero, so let's include that, I don't know. And then three, and then we need to give a reason. So we'll say because G prime is uh, positive and decreasing. And we'll just say there. Okay, now let's move this down to where it belongs and move on to the next part of the question. Find the x-coordinates of each relative maximum of g of x and we wanna justify that. So I'm gonna go back up to my graph and I'm actually just gonna delete uh, the stuff that I'd previously done. So we're looking for relative maximums. Relative maximums where g prime goes from positive to negative. So here and here. So let's write that up. I will say that uh, g of x has relative max at x equals negative five and x equals three. And we need to give a reason. So we'll say because uh, g prime changes positive to negative there. Okay, that's our answer. Let's move it down and see what the next thing is. Oh, I think I'm bringing the wrong thing, but okay, I'll just delete those. I'll try to delete those. There we go, uh, go away. There we go. Okay, state the X coordinate of each point of inflection of G of X. So let's look at our graph. So point of inflection of G of X will be where G prime has a relative extrema. Or you could say where G prime changes from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. That's kind of annoying though, because then you have to like write all of that. Whereas you could just write, because G prime has relative extrema, so that's what I'm gonna do. So I will say G of X has point of inflection at X equals negative four, X equals zero, and X equals four because g prime, I guess of x, uh, has relative extrema there. That's my favorite way to justify it. I feel like it's it's really succinct. Um, it gets, gets the point across and answers the question. So let's move that down and look at the next part. We want to find the range of g of x on the interval negative four to four. Um, note the interval, negative four to four. So I guess, I don't know why I'm saying that. Um, and then justify. So we want the range. So I want to find the absolute minimum and the absolute maximum. I'm going to do the candidates test on this. So to use the candidates test successfully, uh, I need to say that g of x is continuous. So I'm going to start off by writing that down. Uh, g of x is continuous. Now, uh, do I need to justify that? I don't actually know. So I'm gonna say in parentheses, uh, g prime equals 
equals f of x exists uh, for all x element of, uh, I mean, it's, let's include it, because it's true, negative four to four. Uh, so then I wanna say therefore g of x is differentiable, which implies continuous. Okay, so now that's out of the way. Um, let me like squeeze out so you can read that, I guess. So continuous and we're continuous because the derivative always exists. Okay, good deal. Let's go up and um, I'm doing the candidates test actually. So let me just write down the premise of that. Uh, therefore, the absolute max and min are at an endpoint or critical point. Now we're gonna make a table of values, find the biggest value, find the smallest value. So I'm gonna go back up. So negative four to four, um, let's see. Let's erase our previous work. Okay, negative four to four. All right, I see why we have to note the interval. So negative four to four is just like here to here. So we're not dealing with the entirety of the graph. Um, all right, so Bearing in mind that g of x is the integral from two to x, I'm just gonna find a bunch of areas um, and then uh, we'll kind of like go from there. So uh, two to x, so let's start here. And this is a triangle that is one by two. So that has an area of one. And then this has an area of negative one. And then uh, we got four and two, so this is six, and then two by four, but then half of that, so four, and then this is two by three, and then half of two by three is three, but negative. Okay, so the reason I wanted to do that is like, I'm gonna figure out all these values, right? So a uh, key feature here is that g of x is the integral from two, to x. So let's make a table and we'll do x, g of x. Okay, so the x values we think are important are negative four because it's an endpoint, negative two because it's a critical point. Two is not actually important even though everything's going to be based on that. Um, three is a critical point and then four is an endpoint. Okay, so if I start at two, which is what I'm supposed to do, the integral from two to three is one. So the value at three is gonna be one. The value at three is one, and if I keep going to four, I'm gonna lose another one. So I'm gonna do one minus, so back to zero. And then the value at two by itself is zero. So if I went from negative two to positive two, I would pick up 10. Let me double check that. That's this is definitely four, and then this is definitely two, so that's six, and then this is definitely two by four. So, okay, so if I went from negative two to two, I would pick up 10, but since I'm kind of going the wrong way, I'm gonna lose 10. So if I was at zero at two, I'm gonna be at negative 10 when I get to negative two. So negative 10, and then if I went from negative four to two, negative four to negative two, sorry, I would lose three, but since I'm going backwards, I will gain three. So I'm at negative 10 and I'm gonna gain three to take me to negative seven. And then you can kind of go in the other direction, right? So negative seven here, and then you go forward two, you lose three, which takes you to negative 10. You go forward, uh, whatever this is, five, and you're gonna gain 11, which takes you to this, and you go forward one more, and you gain, uh, you lose one, so you get that. All right, so those values, I'm pretty sure are right. Let's bring them down. And we'll put it over here, I guess. Okay, so I'm gonna say, therefore, the absolute max is uh, one at x equals three, and the absolute min is negative 10. 
at x equals negative 2, where this happens is not important, but therefore the range has to go from the absolute min to the absolute max is negative 10 to y to 1. There you go. All right, so that's a, a candidate says is always like a time intensive thing. Find the average value of f of x on the in, on uh, from negative two to four. All right, so uh, average value is integral over interval. So let's start with that. Uh, negative two to four of f of x. So this is f of x, not g of x, over four minus negative two, which will be one sixth of. We got to go up to our graph and find the area. We're going negative two to four. Negative two to four, but we found like everything, I think. Negative two to four is this region, right? So you get four, 10, 11, lose one, gets you back to 10. So I think that's 10. Um, also, I mean, if I got these values wrong, I apologize. Uh, I don't mean to. I'm gonna do something weird. I'm gonna write 11 minus one, just so like people kind of maybe know where I got that information. Uh, but anyway, 10 over 6 is 5 thirds. So I think that's the average value. All right, next up. Find the points on the graph of blah at which the tangent is vertical. So a vertical tangent means that the slope is undefined, which means the denominator of the derivative equals 0. So let's see if we can do that. First up, we've got to find uh, the derivative of y to the fourth plus y squared equals x times x minus 1. All right, so I'm just gonna dive in and do 4y cubed dy dx. So that's a chain rule, plus 2y dy dx. That's the chain rule. Uh, I'm thinking of this as x squared minus x so that I can like not do the product rule. 2x minus one. All right, and then we gotta solve for dy dx. So dy dx is 2x minus one over 4y cubed plus 2y. Okay, so vertical tangent line, we need uh, dy dx to be undefined. So that means that we need the denominator equal to zero. Um, so we need uh, 4y cubed plus 2y to equal zero, which means we need 2y 2y squared plus 1 equals 0. 2y squared plus 1 never equals 0, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, so that means that y equals 0, which is not the end of the problem, right? Because what we need to do is we actually need to find the um, points on the graph. So to find the points on the graph, we go back up here and we plug in. Since y is equal to 0, we just end up with uh, 0 equals x times x minus 1. So either x is 0 or x is positive 1. So our points are going to be 0, 0 or 1, 0. I see a lot of people do this problem successfully, and then at the end they write the points incorrectly. Don't be that person. And we got one more. Evaluate. The limit is n approaches infinity of... So when you see this, you got to automatically think. Um, this is probably... This is limit of almost certainly, but not definitely, a right Riemann sum. So as soon as you see a limit of this kind of weird thing with a lot of pluses, and especially if there's like a dot, 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 you're almost certainly dealing with limit of a right Riemann sum. So let's pull it apart and see if we can figure out how that's the case. Um, my first thought, oops, sorry. My first thought is that this is probably delta x. I think delta x is 2 over n. So if delta x is 2 over n, let's look and see where delta x is being used, right? We have a 1 plus uh, delta x. We have 1 plus 2 times delta x, 1 plus 3 times delta x, 1 plus n times delta x. So I'm going to say that my x sub i, the thing that I'm plugging into a function, is 1 plus i delta x, which is like 1 plus 2i over n. Once you have x sub i, you figure out x0, which will be where you start your integral, and xn, which is where you end your integral. Um, so if i is equal to 0, you get 1 plus 0, so you get 1. 
Um, when i is equal to n, you get 1 plus 2n over n, which is just 3. So those are the bounds of our integral. Now you look and you say, like, what am I plugging this into? Well, if you look, like, here it's 1 plus 1 times delta x, 1 plus 2 times, 1 over 1 plus 2 times delta x, 1 over 1 plus 3 times delta x. I think you're just doing 1 over, um, I mean, you're definitely just doing, I think f of x is 1 over x, right? And just plug in your x of i's, and that's what you get. So what we're doing in this problem is the integral from 1 to 3 of 1 over x dx, which is the natural log of the absolute value of x from 1 to 3, which is the natural log of 3 minus the natural log of 1, which is just the natural log of 3, because you definitely want to remember um, the properties of natural logs and also that the natural log of one is zero. You actually can get this two different ways. The natural log of one is zero, but also the natural log of A minus the natural log of B is the natural log of A over B, which in this case would be the natural log of three divided by one, which is also natural log of three. Either way, you're getting natural log of three. All right, that I believe, um, those are my solutions to review quiz number two. Uh, I hope this was helpful and good luck.